Hello everyone, my name is Zach. If you're like me, you have creative ideas that are trapped inside your head. Here on Bite Size Engineering, I make videos designed to inspire, educate, and empower you to unleash your inner maker. I've had a crazy idea that I wanted to do for a really long time. In this video, I'm going to build a 12 times scale Raspberry Pi. If that wasn't crazy or challenging enough, I'm gonna make it fully functional by hiding a real Raspberry Pi in there and routing all the cables and wires to the various connectors. About a year ago, I did a similar project where I built a giant Arduino board that I called the Arduino Giga. I also made that one fully functional by routing wires to all the different components. If you haven't seen that video, I would encourage you to go check that one out. For this project, I'm going to 3D print the large scale versions of all the components, and then I'm gonna use a 3 quarter inch piece of plywood for the PCB. To start, I opened up a model of a Raspberry Pi here in Fusion 360. Now, when I built the Arduino board, I actually scaled up the whole thing by 12 times in Fusion 360, but that made it really sluggish and really slow and hard to work on because it had so many big pieces to compute. This time I learned my lesson and I'm actually just gonna keep it one-to-one -one scale in the software. And then when I export it to my slicer software for 3D printing, for example, I can just scale it up there. That makes it a lot easier to work with. I'm still new to 3D printing, so I'm learning a lot. And up until now, I've used the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle on my 3D printer. And when I've done projects with big parts like this project and when I did the one wheel project, my print times were astronomical. They were so long and it took days and days to print some of these bigger parts. And I started doing some research and I learned that you can actually have bigger nozzles in your 3D printer. So I ordered a set of uh, 0.6 and 0.8 millimeter nozzles for my 3D printer. Even with these larger print nozzles, the print time is still gonna be over 150 hours. So while these parts are printing, let me tell you about Altium, who is the sponsor of this video. Altium makes a PCB design software called Altium Designer. If you've ever done any sort of electrical design, you're gonna wanna check out Altium Designer. In my career as an electrical engineer, I've used a lot of different software, and let's be honest, most of it is crap. That is not the case with Altium Designer. It is beautifully designed, it's modern, and they're continually updating it to have the latest features. What's cool about Altium Designer is that it's an all-in-one platform. Some of the other software that I've used, you have to use different programs to do your schematic capture, and then your board layout, and then your component selection, and your netlist, and it's a huge mess. That's not the case with Altium Designer. It's all built into one package. Another cool thing about Altium is that it has cloud features. It's got something called Altium 365, which is a cloud workspace that allows you to collaborate with other people and do version control. If you wanna get a better idea of what you can make with Altium Designer, go follow them on Instagram and there's lots of different examples of what people have made using their software. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, go check out Altium Designer and you can do that by clicking on the link in the description. And when you sign up for a subscription, you'll get a 30% discount. Altium is an awesome company. They believe in what I do here on this channel and they make these videos possible. So go check them out. I really appreciate you supporting the sponsors and I appreciate Altium for sponsoring this video.
I'm really excited. This is the first time I'm kind of putting all the pieces together. I've been 3D printing for over a week now and I just got this PCB painted and I'm going to put the 3D printed parts on for the first time just to see what it's gonna look like. It's a freaking huge Raspberry Pi. Now that the board is done, it's time to make this thing fully functional. I'm going to route all of the connectors from the real Raspberry Pi to the connectors that are on the board. I'm going to start with the GPIO pins. Once I'm done with that, all I need to do is route the extension cables that I bought for USB, Ethernet, and HDMI.
The cool thing about this project is that this is a fully functioning pie. I mean, I could use this as a real Raspberry Pi in a real project. Like, can you imagine me hanging it up on the wall and like using it as like a network attached storage or like a pie hole to block ads on my Wi-Fi. There are a whole bunch of possibilities with this and I'm super excited to use this in a project. If you have any ideas of what I should use this for, let me know down in the comments. If you're new here to Bite Size Engineering, I make project videos that help you unleash your inner maker. I've got a lot of project videos like this one, so I'll put a couple here on the left side of your screen. Feel free to check those out. My name is Zach and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'll see you next time.